With the launch of a new fighting game, everyone will be asking themselves the same thing. And that is, who's the best beginner character for me to start out with? And I'm on the same boat as you. I never played Guilty Gear before, so I want to know which characters will help me out learning the mechanics faster, and who are the most fun to use. I'll be analyzing these characters and their move list to see why these 5 characters are the most suited for beginners. Welcome to my top 5 character for beginners in Guilty Gear Strive. What's going on guys, my name is Mad Dog Games, and welcome to the first episode for my beginner tips series. A series will help you figure out how to get started and overcome the common problems new players face. But before we get started, I do have other playlists on the channel that you might be interested in. All found in the description down below. This is the first episode of the series, so you won't see anything yet, but in time, I'll cover other topics just like I did in Mortal Kombat 11. With that being said, let us get started. The first one on the list at number 5 is Ramlethal Valentine, a mid-range brigadier and a wielder of two giant swords. She is labeled as a 3-star character by the developers when it comes to how easy she is to use, so let's find out why. Ramlethal Valentine is beginner-friendly thanks to her long-range screen control and a simple playstyle to understand. She's categorized as a shooter character in this game, or in traditional terms, a zoning character. And just like all zoners, you do have to keep in mind that some of your attacks will have longer startup time or longer recovery. Taking a look at her normal attacks, her neutral game is pretty good. Her standing slash covers great range in neutral and is very easy to hit confirm into. When looking at her special moves, we have Agresa or Dono, a long range aerial attack that is excellent for area poke. And Sabrobato, a powerful long range attack that deals heavy damage and is excellent for punishing your opponents in neutral. For close quarters, Ramlethal offers Eralumo, an attack that moves her forward dealing multiple hits and knocks the opponent down. The first hit of this move can be cancelled with a dash allowing you to mix your opponent up and set up for something nice. She also offers Dyro, a fast lunge attack that is fast in startup and fast in recovery making a great mid-range poke to get in. Sildo the Truo is an overhand attack with great range, perfect for punishing low blocking opponents. Beginners will feel very comfortable knowing they can control the pace of the fight. Now here's what makes her slightly difficult to master. You do have to learn to be responsible with managing your projectiles. When using Banjonetto, a powerful projectile that goes full screen, it does end up sticking to the corner of the stage. And we already know that she already uses these swords for her basic attacks and special moves. So this means without it, your range attack suffers in neutral and won't allow you to perform certain attacks without them. You can wait for them to come back or pick them up by getting closer to them. But aside from managing your projectiles, she has a game plan that is very simple to put into play. Your main goal is to control space and force your opponent to the corner because her projectiles then become more deadly. They not only stick at the corner, but explode causing more damage and pressure. And she's able to juggle the opponent more and making some nice combos. Playing as Ramethal Valentine, it means you like to control the pace of the fight by using your projectiles and long range attacks to scare your opponent off to the corner. With an effective and simple game plan, I think beginners will be able to enjoy this character. Next one on the list is Mei, a character that looks gentle on the outside, but trust me, she's a bully in many ways. I mean, look at this, she abuses the poor little dolphin to do her dirty work. Poor dolphin. She's labeled as a 4 star character by the developers when it comes to how easy she is to use, so let's find out why. Mei is beginner friendly because she offers plenty of things that keep her safe on block, has tools for every situation, and gets to bully you because of her hyper aggressive playstyle. And it's all thanks to her mobility she gains, that damn spammable dolphin, and command grab for up close combat. She is categorized as a balanced character so you know her versatility automatically makes her perfect for beginners. Taking a look at her normal attacks, her neutral game is great for new players. Normals like Slash, Crouching Slash, and Kick have a lot of range making it easy to use and throw out. When it comes to her special moves, she has plenty of attacks that are very easy to abuse. The only downside is that she is a charge character, meaning that you will have to get used to a charge back forward motion to use her special move. For example, her best attack is Mr. Dolphin Horizontal and Mr. Dolphin Vertical is a lunge attack that covers great range. The slash version has fast startup but long recovery, whereas the heavy slash has a slower startup but faster recovery. So she does give you options to mix it up if you like. This is the move that drives everyone crazy because this is easily spammable. 
but not only spammable, combining it with certain attacks makes you plus on block. As a mate player starting off, it is an option, so why not take it, right? Then, for close quarters, she offers Overhead Kiss, a command grab that allows you to punish your opponents for blocking. So overall, she loves to bully you no matter where she's at on the screen. So let's take a look at her full screen potential. She has Arisugawa Sparkle, a projectile that moves to the ground from up in the air. There are two different trajectories. First is the punch version, where it's meant for close range. And then the kick version, where it launches a little further. Mei does not have a traditional projectile because they don't necessarily help when it comes to trading, but instead help her set up for her pressure. You will have to use her mobility to get around your enemy's projectiles. You will kinda have to work a little bit to try to get in on some matchups. Playing as Mei, it means you like to get close and personal and like to take advantage of strong special moves to abuse the opponent more often. With her extra mobility and safe attacks on block, I think she's a great choice for beginners. The next one on the list is Soul Bad Guy, a poster boy and the main protagonist of Gale to Gear Strive. He is labeled as a 4 star character by the developers when it comes to how easy he is to use, so let's find out why. Soul Bad Guy is beginner friendly because of how easy he is to execute his combos with, is comfortable in most situations, and offers plenty of safe attacks on block. Soul is categorized as a balanced character but excels mostly in rushdown because of his highly aggressive playstyle to get in. Also the fact that he's not equipped with a standard projectile, so that is what you'll have to work with. Taking a look at his basic attacks, Soul Bad Guy's Standing Slash is very good for beginners. It is easily one of his best moves because of the range it covers in neutral and how easy it is to spend with. This also is plus on block so you can use this over and over as a stagger tool or hit confirm it for a combo. His other best normal is Command Normal 2, which is a long range attack that is great for mid range and is also safe on block overall making it a great poke to use. When looking at his special moves, he offers a strong anti-air attack called Volcanic Viper. This is great because it is invincible on startup and is used to interrupt your opponent's block strings. Next one would be Night Raid Vortex, an attack that sends Soul moving forward that ends with a low blow to the opponent. This is great for beginners because it has many uses for it. First on hit, this launches your opponent in the air, creating an opportunity for a combo. Or you can extend the distance on where Soul would be by holding slash to evade attacks then go for the hit. So now let's take a look at what Soul has for projectiles. Although it's not a traditional projectile, he offers Gunflame, a projectile that travels a short distance and knocks the opponent down. However, it is very little risky to use due to its long active state. This is why he also offers Gunflame Faint, which is the same animation as Gunflame, but no fire pillars appear and it has much faster recovery. This can catch opponents who are looking to punish Gunflame on block. Moves like these will give beginners plenty of options to take advantage of. Playing as Soul Bad Guy, it means you like to be very hyper aggressive against your opponent and use your versatility to force mistakes to punish your opponent more often. With its easy combos and high damage, I think beginners can easily master this character. The next one on the list is Giovanna, one of the newest characters to join the Guild to Gear roster. She is labeled as a 4 star character when it comes to how easy she is to use, so let's find out why. Giovanna is known to be very easy to use because of a few reasons. First, she has very short but powerful effective combos that are easy to execute, equipped with plenty of save attacks on block, and has a straightforward game plan that is easy to understand. She is categorized as a rushdown character and rewards you for playing aggressive. Taking a look at her basic attacks, Giovanna's offers a normal attack that is definitely perfect for beginners. Her standing slash is a multi-hitting attack that does great damage on hit and can easily be used for pressure. It does break armor making it your number one go-to move. When looking at her special moves, she offers pretty good attacks that help you start your offense. Such as Travaio, a lunge attack where Giovanna charges forward swiftly while attacking. It has low recovery making it perfectly safe to keep using in neutral. Command Normal 2 is also a forward moving attack that is easy to use in combos and is a great pressure strain. And lastly, in neutral she also offers Sepultra and Sol Puente. Both are forward moving attacks that knocks the opponent on the ground hard. Sol Puente is specifically used for doing cross ups at close range, making it a good option to mix the opponent up. And did I mention that all of her special moves are completely safe? Some of them also leave you plus on block, so beginners can easily throw these attacks around to keep the pressure up and not worry about being punished, which is definitely a good thing. Another reason she is great for beginners is because her automatic buff she gains throughout the match. 
Once you build up your tension bar, your character powders up in a green aura that grants her more defensive abilities like taking less damage from your opponent, as well as gaining a small damage buff once her tension bar grows. With something like this, it helps beginners go all in without having to worry a whole lot. Playing a Giovanna, it means you like to rush down your opponent and pressure them every chance you get. With her easy combos and high damage, I think she makes a great choice for beginners. The best and easiest one on the list will have to be Kai Kisk, one of the main characters in the game and Soul Bad Guys' as rival. He's labeled as a 5 star character when it comes to how easy he is to use, so let's break him down and find out why. Kai Kisk is very easy to use because of a few reasons. Compared to all of the characters on the roster, Kai is a traditional balanced character meaning he is great with dealing any matchups because he is comfortable at all ranges. He is equipped with plenty of good range attacks for neutral and has easy combos to execute. His game plan is straightforward which makes practicing fundamentally easier. Taking a look at his basic attacks, Kai has plenty of attacks that are beginner friendly. For example, his crouching slash, standing slash, heavy slash, down heavy slash covers a pretty good range in neutral. When taking a look at his special attacks, we have Stun Dipper and Foudry Arc that are great to start your offensive pressure. Another reason he is great for beginners is because he offers an easy but a strong anti-air attack. Vapor Thrust is invincible on startup and can be used to interrupt your opponent's block strings. All of these strong long range attacks really do not require a lot of thought in using them. Kai also offered easy and effective projectile that can be used at full screen. For example, Stun Edge is a projectile that moves forward and comes out pretty quickly, which makes an effective poking tool. Charge Stun Edge is similar, but takes slightly longer to come out and travels slower across the screen. But what is special about this one is that it does multiple hits and allows it to move a little bit afterwards, which makes a great offensive tool. In the last projectile, we have Aerial Stun Edge, a projectile that moves towards the ground from the air, which makes another great long range poke. Finally, one of the coolest thing about this character too is his Dragon Install. When you're low in health, it transforms him into a supercharged version of himself. His attacks are faster and do more damage during this state. This feature would definitely help beginners make some nice comebacks. Playing as Kai Kisk means you're ready for anything and everything. With a simple but effective game plan, you'll be able to master this character in no time. If you guys are curious on who I'll be picking out to start out with, that would be Giovanna. I wanted to pick Melia because, you know, I mean, look at her. I have weakness when it comes to blondes, my guy. But sadly, she is way too hard for me. My playstyle is more of a rushdown, pressure with safe attacks on blocks kind of character. So Giovanna for me is my comfortable choice. I'll pick Melia once I'm ready. So let me know in the comments down below on who you decided to play in this game. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you pick to start out with. As long as you find the right character you find fun to learn, that is what matters the most. This is Mad Dog Games. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thanks for helping this channel reach the 53,000 subscribers. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time.